All right, guys, welcome to today's episode. I am back in beautiful La Crosse, Wisconsin, one of my favorite places on the other end of the Mississippi River from where I grew up, and uh, I'm back here with Jeremiah Burrish. We're heading back into a backwater, backwoods stretch of the Mississippi River right in downtown La Crosse. One of the great things about this area is the diversity of species. So we're gonna get back there and see if we can't show off. The water's up high, the bass are gonna be back in the trees, the pike are gonna be hungry, the sun's out, the birds are chirping, the wind's blowing, but we're gonna get back there and get protected. La Crosse was experiencing historic flood level water level. We're talking about water levels upwards of 13 feet when 10 feet is flood stage. So we had to pick a spot that wouldn't be affected as much. So Jeremiah picked a really nice channel that had some docks on it in a backwater area that wasn't as affected as much. So I got some rocks coming up here that look like they're for erosion abatement, but it's pretty vertical. So a lot of those are probably gonna kind of fall down into the water which means there should be good, pretty good rock pile down here. There he is, right under the tree. Basically played the old tree bass and got him off the limb. And there's a fence under there and some rocks. And that smallmouth was laying right up in there where I thought he would be. Pretty chunky little smallmouth. A little large mouth that time. We're back in the birthplace of the dink drop, so it's only fitting that we go ahead and get the day started with a dink drop. There's one. Oh my gosh. They are not hitting it hard. There's one. Oh, nice small mouth. Beautiful little smallmouth. See what else we can find. I know they're in here, so it's a good start. We'll catch some more. Especially, like I said, when that water warms up and we get into it a little bit more. So we're having a great time out here fishing with Chad, but the really great thing is, you know, this fun fishing also counts. Every one of these fish, I get to log in the monthly kayak challenge series and uh, you know, try to earn my way to the national championship. So kind of killing two birds with one stone. Just throwing the Senko up, up against that, that cover against the shoreline and the rocks are right there. Real slow and methodical. It'll be a nice little up upgrade. A little bigger than the last one, that's for sure. So Jeremiah is measuring his fish right now, positioning his identifier with his tourney tag because he is fishing in the state challenge to attempt to go back to the Kayak Bass Fishing National Championship, where this time he can try to make it inside the top 100. <laughs> so one of the reasons I love coming to La Crosse, Wisconsin is the fact that you catch smallmouth in places you really don't catch them other places. We're catching smallmouth in the backwaters on matted grass. We're catching them on docks. You never know when you're gonna cast up into a pocket, hook into a feisty smallmouth and have a fight on your hands. Oh, oh, look, look at this, look at this. Joker ate it at the front of the boat. Oh my gosh. Good night. Look at this thing, dude. <laughs> oh man, that, he ate it at the front. I saw him come up and I dropped the lure and he ate it. Look at that, look at that. Pretty freaking fish, man. Mm, pretty color. Look at that striped cheek pad, man. They're gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Oh, there he is. There's a the northern. <laughs> Came back for it. Just a little guy. They're still fun. He hit it and actually, he short struck it and, and missed the hook. And I saw my bait after I set the hook because it was only like six feet away. And I uh, was watching my bait and I was about to pull it out of the water and it came back and hit it. I got to watch the whole thing just under the surface of the water come back and hit it. That's why when I, when I set the hook, he came over the, the kayak. 
So that was pretty cool. Those are, those northern are so aggressive. They come back a lot of times. So sometimes I wish the bass were that aggressive, and they can be, but not like those northerns. So La Crosse is a really special place. It's actually known as the Driftless Region because the last two Ice Age glaciers have come through and they have missed this area completely. And so what it's done is it's, it's left this absolutely gorgeous landscape of the, the towering bluffs overlooking the Mississippi River Valley. It's created an absolute outdoor recreation paradise. The Mississippi River and all the, the rivers and uh, its tributaries that flow into it are just an incredible fishery. The upper Mississippi River that we're on right now has 119 species in it, chock full of fish. The quality and quantity are both second to none in the country. So a lot of different varieties of fish, a ton of different options, whatever your style is, whatever you want to target, we have it here in one of the most beautiful destinations in the world. There we go. Well, that was fun. <laughs> so I caught that fish on a top toad. And uh, what's cool about these baits is the fish will sling it a lot of times. And then all you have to do is just, uh, just screw it back on. It's got the double hook on it, so the hookup ratio it's pretty insane. I'll, I'll uh, get this screwed back on and I'll show you guys a closer look of it. So basically it's a screw lock that holds it in place. I'm fishing a wire leader because of the big pike here. And then what you do is you force the hooks between the legs and it's got a nice little cradle made on the bait just like that. And you just skin it just inside the, the top of the back and it makes it weedless. And a uh, really simple lure system to fish. You just throw it out. What I like to do is let it hit the water and give it a little twitch so it gets right side up. I hold my rod tip up and I slow reel it. And I mean, you can bring it through the thickest stuff ever and it just comes right on through. It's deadly. Just had a little fish spook right there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it back in there and see if that fish will, will eat it. But you can pop it and let it sit in place because it floats, it's a hollow body. Uh, or you can just steady reel it and burn it along the surface and it's, um. It's deadly effective. They, uh, bass, <laughs> honestly, there's not a species that I've, that I've encountered yet that won't hit that thing. There he is, over the dock. All right, so I turned my camera off and made a cast over this handrail thinking that I could catch a fish over there. And sure enough, I did. So I'm gonna go see if I can't get this smallmouth over this handrail. Probably not that great for the fish, but definitely shows off the power of my all-pro rod. Good fish over the dock and uh, yeah, over the handrail. Pretty fish. Pretty Mississippi River smallmouth. So I love my Bonafide kayak. On this kayak, you sit so high, which already is nice, but to then be able to stand up so easily, I frog fish a ton, and when I'm frog fishing, I wanna have that leverage, I wanna stand up and be able to, to really set that hook hard. And in this kayak, I am extremely comfortable standing up, setting that hook with all my power, because it's so stable. In my opinion, it is the best fishing kayak on the market and I plan on fishing out of a Bonafide for a long, long time to come. Oh, it's a pike. But we got a frog fish. You got that frog too. I'm surprised he didn't cut me off. Look at that thing in there. This is why you carry a pliers in the Mississippi River waters. Here we go, here we go, fish, fish, fish. 
I knew there'd be a smallmouth back there. 